She is now the Vice President, Human Resource and Public Relations at Jamaica Broilers. Ladies and gentlemen, I know the music man going to play, but it's because she's full of fire, so I want you to stand to your feet. And you know, like, you're pretending you're on an Oprah show and there's something in the background that says clap and cheer. And help me welcome on stage, Rochelle Cameron! stage a lot. <laughs> this is what I was meant for. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 2019 is here. So give yourself a round of applause and tell Jesus thank you. We'll make it. What date is this today? 19. 19th. And we're going to do what today? Elevate. Elevate. What that mean? On a bright. <laughs> so we'll lift up yourself. So I had a very interesting 2018. I'm actually still a lawyer. <laughs> I think the GLCC, I'm still a lawyer. <laughs> Let's just make sure. So 2018 was one of my most difficult years. I am one of those people that I like to think I'm very sure of direction. I don't really like surprises, and I make lists about everything. And from I was about five years old, I knew that I wanted to be a lawyer, and that's all I really wanted to do. Send people to prison. <laughs> <laughs> get them out <laughs> and I've been practicing for 20 years and then I say wow like when I do some maths <laughs> I just graduated real early I was at a stage to that I was pretty much at the top of my game. Um, but I wasn't comfortable. And I have found, and I'm going to be very careful how I speak today. You see, anything I talk about between January and March, at that kind of year, I got off. So, year before last, I did talk about discomfort. I did get uncomfortable. Last year, I talked about change, so I did have change. So this year, I'm going to talk about money. <laughs> money! Rich, you know! <laughs> that alone, I talk about. Money, Jesus, you hear me? So I was uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable, and I could not understand why. And in fact, I felt bad about it because I felt that I'd been so blessed and I was living my dream. Everything I had ever written down about how I wanted my career to be was happening. 
and I was not satisfied. And I felt, how dare you not be satisfied? I look back at list of things that I wrote, even the very office that I sat in. I had described it when I was about 17 years old, and I was in it. How could it be possible that it did not feel like it was enough? So I struggled. Now, one of the things I want you to be very mindful of as you elevate is that you get to particular levels, things that you have dreamed about, and you still ask yourself, why am I not fulfilled? And you feel bad. Because your husband's body look good. <laughs> your car look nice. You have a king-size bed. Your TV big. The children, them head dry, but them cute. <laughs> and you're saying to yourself, Jesus, this is all I ask for. Why do I not feel fulfilled? And how dare I? There are hungry people in the world. You want to tell a friend about it. But the friend is like, <laughs> you're sad. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Why? When you go into your big house, you feel sad. <laughs> your friend is like, you're living every dream that you want. How dare you be sad? So you hold it in. And you feel ashamed of yourself. Because one of the things I want us to remember as we go through today, that it's not fear that holds us back, it's shame. So we're going to go somewhere. Now, I do not write well, but I love to write. So you're going to pick up as I go along. How, of, how many of us are ashamed of where we came from? And we say things like, I don't come from nowhere. You know, if you say it, you know, because people, you did tell lies, say, King Sun Six, you come from. <laughs> you don't come from there, come from country. Nothing no wrong. <laughs> Today, I want you to remember there's no place called nowhere. Take out on the paper. I want you to ask yourself, what are you really ashamed of? And we're ashamed of a lot of things. I'm ashamed of myself. On Sunday, I went to Price Mart. I don't like going to Price Mart. I buy things that I don't need. So as I got there, the rain started falling. Okay? Now, I have black hair, so I don't do anything wet, no moisture. And when I got there, I said, I'm not parking upstairs, I'm going to park downstairs. So I wait for one man when I see I'm unpacking grocery for them, for the liquor space. So I wait, I wait, and one guy just come around me, you know. I behave badly. <laughs> I am not a highly evolved person. <laughs> My manifestation is low. <laughs> I wind down that window. Mr. said, oh no, mad! Now, I say this to say that some of us, we look at people, we make assumptions about people being highly evolved. We want to wonder why I am not Zen and other people are Zen. I have never had a Zen day in my life. <laughs> I can't even spell Zen. I'm worked up most of the times. I am. I'm either highly excited, I feel my emotions and I feel them all the time. And it's okay. Because you know what, guys? We've made it to 2019. And we are going to make a decision that we are going to elevate out of the things that are holding us back from being and knowing who we are. Eh? From loving everything about ourselves. I love everything about me. End of December, I looked at my form in the mirror. And I want to admit 
that my legs look like cold porridge when you stir it up. <laughs> and people, I am a girl who don't like to exercise none at all. But I get up now every morning at 4.30. I do burpee till me I lose my mind over burpee. Why? Because my legs look like cold porridge that stir up. I ask myself the question, though, what is your real motivation behind that? One of my easy answers is vanity, because I'm vain. But I know this about myself. I do. I look in the mirror regularly, often. I congratulate myself on my intense, immense beauty, often. <laughs> I wonder if people, I don't know how people work with me, how they speak to me, because I'm gorgeous all the time. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But I own this me. I own me. I own that if you take my parking space, I'm going to vex with you. I'm going to act angry. Because when I saw my reflection in the rearview mirror, I'm like, not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> and I was coming from church. We got my solo field crew. <laughs> I was like, Jesus wouldn't do this. <laughs> but I'm wrong. No, I'm encouraging you to embrace everything about you. There is no one like you. That's my cousin over there. Hi, Laurie. <laughs> There is no one like you. And you've spent so much of your life trying to be these other people. How about 2019? We elevate into self. We own everything. Parage leg. Everything about ourselves. We embrace that we are alive. So there is a hope. We ask ourselves the unfulfillment that I'm feeling. Is it because of my porridge legs? Or is it because I have not even started tapping into all that I am? I'm ashamed of where I came from. You know, I was speaking to a young lady the other day, bright girl. I was helping her with an interview for a very major scholarship. And in the middle of it, she broke down, and she said to me, you know that I actually didn't pass for a traditional high school. I did very badly in my GSAT. Now, the girl is like preparing to do a doctorate, you know? <laughs> so I am like, who cares, though? <laughs> I'm like, you're going to do a doctorate at a school where you have to wear cold clothes in far foreign, and you are telling me that you did like the bad at Jesus? <laughs> so I say, hold on, mom. So the whole of your life, you're galang, galang, at about Jesus? <laughs> How many of us in here are still wondering if people know that we did only pass three subjects? <laughs> the things that hold us back, the things that hold us back. The shame place that we place ourselves so comfortably in. And we love to wrap ourselves up in it. Because you're like, if you ever knew, you would say, I must stay in that place. I am telling you, it is 2019. Step out. Step out in Ame. Ha! Ha! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is the beginning of your new life. It is time to put some things aside. You see that niggling discomfort you feel? What I felt was that I knew that my real space that I came alive was with people. I love doing motivational speaking. 
and I love human resources, but I'm a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I know, long you study feet. <laughs> Murder. So I did study long. And people like, you're a lawyer. So if me leave the lawyer directly, maybe me not so much a lawyer. Eh? Me not have no ambition. Them bright. <laughs> I wrote down about a year and a half ago a description of my dream job. And I'm in it. But when it came to me, I said to Jesus, I didn't mean 2018, Lord. <laughs> I mean, I have an intention in the future when you so desire to bless me, but not in 2018. When your dreams come through, are you ready? Are you ready? You know how I know most of you aren't? When last you update your CV? Yesterday. Put up your hand if you updated it yesterday. Put it up if you haven't updated in the last five years. The last four years. Nobody in the shame. So one of the things I ask you to do is you need to be able to define what is it that you currently do and what you desire to do. Now to move from what you desire to the actual doing is where the struggle is. So last year, one of the struggles I had is that I didn't want to do any more motivational speaking because I felt like I was cheating people. I felt like people came, they were pumped up, but they weren't sure what to do next. You know what I mean? So you're like, I'm on fire! When you leave out of the Pegasus, you're like, the world is my oyster. Yeah! Boogie, woogie, 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 ah. Then you get home, you start going low. You go up on Instagram, you see your friend. She look like, she there Egypt. Here you know, where she get money from? For Ghana, Egypt. Eh? Oh, me not have no money for going to Egypt. I hate my life. Eh? You know what I mean? Yeah, man. You see by tomorrow? You see me two times I'll go to church it. Because look how long me I pray for go to Egypt. <laughs> and she died Egypt. She not deserve for that not Egypt. <laughs> me for that Egypt. Yeah. You remember what we say? This year is a year that we're going to focus on ourselves. This year is a year we're going to unravel. Because you have to unravel to put it together. So we're going to take off some shame, but we have to be able to acknowledge what the shame is. What is it that I don't want people to really know? Sometimes I feel like an imposter. And please don't let them ask me that question, because they're going to know I'm an imposter. Eh? So we need to take off the shame. Then we need to get up and we need to ask ourselves, because we blame a lot of people why after we leave, we don't have no action, you know. The children are always blamed. Oh, God. They have GSAT, they have PEP, they have CSEC. Then the wife, she's too miserable. The husband, he want me to cook every day, he's too awful. The work and the number one person we blame our boss, because it's our boss that has hold, held us back all of these years. But you know who holds you back? So you know this, don't? But it's easier to blame somebody else. How many of us are very clear on the dream, but we have to recognize that we've just been too lazy? Yes, we're lazy. 
And we sometimes we take out one piece of paper and we write down the plan again. Then we take to a bed. We're like, mm, I feel overwhelmed. <laughs> Let me take a break. <laughs> but you see, March, I'm going to take you back up in a March. Yeah. Next quarter. One of the things that you're going to do is that you need to identify your circle of genius. Not friends, genius. If I spell one word wrong, I'm going to take a picture of it here. <laughs> now, your circle of genius are the people that you can share the dream and the intention with. Now, a lot of us, because you know, say we, we, we have a way where we don't trust nobody. We don't trust nobody. Because I'm going to tell them about my dream, then I'm going to teeth my dream. <laughs> I know them, the wicked people them. Now, if you're starting a business and you don't know anything about finance, I would suggest <laughs> that you find somebody who does. <laughs> okay? Okay. Because businesses fail because we don't understand anything about money. And it's okay not to. You are going to be shocked when you start vocalizing the intention, where you want to go, what the dream is, what you currently have in place, and what is missing, that things start falling into place. So, Catherine Goodall right here. I met Catherine years ago. And, then my and she wasn't like my friend, you know, we just see each other and we, hey, mm, how you doing, girl? <laughs> and Catherine calls me one day out of the blue and she says, with your speaking, we need to have something else going with it. So I said, why can't you not pressure me, fa? She said, you need to get your social media. I mean, say you're too pressuring. <laughs> but you need somebody to pressure you who is keeping you accountable. So Catherine calls me out of the blue last year. And by the way, on my vision board, because I have the same vision board for the last two years. And let me tell you, when you see the things start coming in, who could it be but God? So I wanted to do a workshop. Catherine calls me and says she wants me and, for me and her to meet with Naomi Garrix. So I say, do I? Drinks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we met, and we clicked, and I recognized that one of the things that I wanted to do was a workshop, but I didn't have all the resources. I needed help. I needed? Yeah. Ah, and we all need help. And after I have this workshop in my head for five years, two people, who I never got school with, I never worked with before, but were placed specifically in my space, there's going to be a workshop. <laughs> March 2nd, because we're emerging. Happy birthday, baby girl. <laughs> no, I have had such a strong desire to talk about how we get to what next. You will not get to what next alone. Okay? Now, the reason I am in HR is that people know that that is where my interest was, in HR. Now, you wouldn't look at a lawyer and think she cares about people because lawyers don't really love people. <laughs> <laughs> huh? We know, like, it's not a people business. We eat people. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you end up in a profession that you get stigmatized. So you're an accountant. So if you're an accountant, you couldn't like marketing. Are you willing to do your dream for free? Hmm? Are you willing to do it for free? Because you have to be willing to do it for free. You have to be willing to put yourself in the arena just so that people are even able to see that you're interested. So a lot of people will say to me, you know, I work in a company, I'm in IT, but I'm really interested in marketing. 
So me said they have marketing at your office? Yes, but nobody wants me to work in marketing. I did apply that time and they never considered me. So I said, your company that does marketing, have you ever volunteered your services on a weekend to do the marketing? No, on a weekend, I have to cook my soup and go to the supermarket. You're not ready. Because let me tell you something. When you are ready, you are hungry. When you are ready, you are unstoppable. When you are ready, you stop sitting down worrying about people stealing your dream. You want to share your dream. You want to tap into your dream when you are ready. Okay? So if you're currently sitting down with your dream, you are it quietly, together. You're not ready. But the discomfort you feel is you know, you know that dream needs to come alive. You need to give birth to that dream. Have you ever done a business analysis of your life? You know that you're the CEO, so everybody you can put on your resume, CEO. Of your life. Hmm? You're accountable. Not your husband, not your friends, not the children, not the boss. You are accountable. When you come to JMMB, <laughs> when you come to JMMB, and you're hearing about wealth. What do you think wealth means for the business of your life? There's a book, The Richest Man in Babylon. Yeah. No, you say, yeah. You know, say, I read that book about three times before I fully understand it. I have a little tough head sometime, you know. Let me tell you what I was resisting. The 10% that you pay to yourself. I didn't understand that 10%. You understood it. No. This 10%, I thought, is the 10% that you put to save towards house, Egypt, you know what I'm saying? Travel, all of these things. It is a 10% that you take out of your earnings and you are putting aside to grow wealth. Which means that the rest of your life needs to be centered around the 9 tenth. Some of you are doing a quick math. You're like, you don't know my paycheck, girl. <laughs> no, no, not this year. <laughs> I want you to go home with that paycheck. And I want you to take out 10% and consider it paying to yourself. You don't get paid for January yet. Take out 10% and figure out how you're going to pay the bills and live on the 9 tenth. Yeah. And it is scary. Huh? And you still have a tithe, so it's eight tenths. Yeah. Let me give you a quick story about tithing. Um, so with the, with, the, with the tenth, that one tenth, and it's not savings, it's paying yourself. It's paying yourself. You see, tithing, me and Jesus, they talk a lot about tithing. Because I'm like, Jesus, you and I know how much I earn. So why you would have think, say, this month, like all when we did start paying my new mortgage, me said the two of us go get the house together as a team. You couldn't expect me to tie that month, yeah? Because you know me don't have any money for it. Because we did it as a team. Team, me, and Jesus. So, the first mortgage month, hear me now. Lord, I just want to thank you for the provision that you have given. And this tenth that I'm not going to give to you, I'm going to use it wisely. <laughs> and I got a devotion about your first mortgage and paying your tithing. So apparently, did he didn't really hear me, and he must say tithe. Now, guys, you see, as you're stepping forth into yourself, you have to be resolute that all will be well. No matter no matter how difficult it looks, it will be well. I tithed 
and the nine tenth was left, and it didn't look so good. And I went to the ATM to draw a little something so that I wouldn't drive without money, and there was a payment in my account of the exact amount that I had tithed. Hallelujah! Yes. Yeah. You see, when we're tithing to people, because the discomfort that some of us are feeling is that we don't recognize that this life, this body, this time on earth is not about ourselves. How are we using our skills and talent to make other people's life rich and full and better? Huh? So at the beginning of this year, I did some, just some small vision board sessions with a couple of my friends because I found that I was not tithing my time. I was just always too busy. And I had gotten like fancy canvas because I know fun everything. So everybody was like, these canvas, look like they cost money. Oh, 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 should we make a contribution? But I'd gotten a clear message from the Lord that this was a part of my planting of a seed. And let me tell you something. I went into my account again. And I mean, up to the last cent of what I spent on the canvases was just in my account, just an abstract payment. And I said, who could it be? Ah, so I'm telling you all of this because for my own life, for my 2019, I have to be asking myself about purpose. So it's not enough for me to just be on a big stage and share. I recognize that I have to be giving of myself to my friends, to my family. I have to be hearing with a different air. Because guys, let me tell you, no matter how big that house is or how big that bank account is, you will not be fulfilled if you cannot share of this person. And the life is short. It's short. It's short. So, I encourage you to ask yourself, in the business of me, what do I bring to the table? What do I bring to the table? You do not bring a degree to the table. I did many, and I swat for enough exam. So degree don't excite me, none tall. <laughs> We still cannot do statistics, and I got an A. <laughs> what do you bring to the table? Hmm? What's your attitude? What do people see when they see you? How many different faces do you have? No, fee? Work face, which is <laughs> church face. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the friend face when you chat people. Because <laughs> some of you come in this room already and send a WhatsApp chatting somebody. But Jesus has forgiven you. <laughs> because you never elevate yet. Now, what do you bring to your table? You bring your attitude to the table. Hmm? You bring your vibes to the table. You bring your willingness to teach to the table. You bring all the knowledge that you have acquired over these years, you bring that to the table. What are your weaknesses? What are those things in your control that are currently holding you back from really squeezing everything out of your strengths? What are those weaknesses? Laziness is the number one. Procrastination. Bad mind. Bad mind is our enemy. Yeah, man. Envy, bad mind, red eye, all of it. You know what, what bad mind is? Bad mind is your obsession with other people's lives. Because to bad mind, you actually have to be paying attention to other people's life. And while you're busy doing that, yours are spoiled. It's 2019. 
I spoke to a good friend recently who was diagnosed with cancer, stage four. Yeah, man, you know, the time to live cancer. And he reminded me about facing your mortality. He reminded me that when you hear you have three months to live, all of a sudden, everything starts coming into perspective. You start forgiving some people, calling them up. You start looking back at dreams and trying to see where you are in that space. Let me just remind us all, we are all dying. Some of us, a doctor has given us a date. Treat every day of this 2019 and going forth like it could be my last. And I owe it to myself to make every day the most awesome I can make it with everything that I have. I will be grateful. I will be grateful just because I'm alive. I will be grateful for the little pay that I get. I will be grateful that if I apply myself, if I make myself open and available for success, it will be mine. Because one of our weaknesses is that we close ourselves from success. We close ourselves because we are so afraid of success. We're afraid of people looking at us. We're afraid of the effort that it will take. Because it means you can't sleep so late again. Yeah. It means those weekends that you hold sacrosanct, you may have to share them. It means those people who reach in at 6 o'clock and you can't even call them. You're going to have to share of yourself. Are you prepared for that? And you don't have to be. Because sometimes we think there's a magic shot that we get that everything falls into place. It doesn't work like that. Never happens. Never happens. You know, Bujo, everybody gets on a Bujo ticket already? Okay. The side crashed. Look at that, eh? You know, Bujo sang about the portee, and he was deported. Remember the song, The Driver? Yeah. yeah. Be careful what you speak over yourself. Yeah. Be super careful what you speak over yourself. You have to remove from self certain words out of your vocabulary. Yeah. Be careful what you prophesy over yourself. You see, when we say we pop down, you see, you say it enough times, you pop down. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. If you say you're successful, what does success look like and feel like? You know, a lot of us do vision boards. And as we're doing it, and some of you that have done it already, I ask you to just go back and look at it. Because worse, if you do it in a group, you feel bad if you don't have a picture upon it. Yeah. But you look for your friend owner and you say, oh, she looks like she wants some money. Me want some money too. But you haven't started to just, just stop. One of the things as you go through the process of unraveling, open yourself to just breaking apart. Open yourself, all the man them, to the tears. I just want to give a round of applause to the men that are here. Because the men don't seem to want to come to anything. And it's the women, them alone, I get fulfilled. Please bring on a man, them are not going to have to mind them. We don't know JMMB money. <laughs> eh? Yeah. Now, as you unravel, you're going to have to face some things about what is making you weak. What are your opportunities, the unique opportunities you have? Some of you work in large organizations that the very thing you want to do is there and you could go and learn it. Some of you have the contacts and the network to be able to tap into things. You know what the biggest opportunity there is? The internet. Because everything you need to know, it's there. Yeah. Not the social media. Because some of us think reading post is reading. It is not. Okay. What are the threats in our environment that you need to be aware of? 
You know, sometimes even like what's happening in our political arena, a lot of us as adults don't even understand it. You know, those things affect your wealth. Eh? We are going for 2019 to close ourselves off from shame and doubt and open ourselves, open ourselves to who we can possibly be. Scare yourself. Scare yourself when you write down the role that you want. Scare yourself when you describe the business. Write it down, be afraid, walk away. Because you see, if your heart not beating fast, you haven't gone hard. You haven't gone hard. Yeah, attach pain to it. I like those kind of words, attach pain to it. Because it's a painful process. So last year, as I made the decision to pretty much walk away from a job that I had established myself to step into the unknown, I have never been so afraid in my life. I was very doubtful. Um, I questioned my decision over and over again. And then, you know you have some people who are like, what do I do? And I reminded myself, though, of the dream. Because even when people doubt you and you doubt yourself, go back to the dream. Go back to the intention. And I went right back to it. And I said, Lord, you've given me this opportunity. I will trust the process. I will trust it. Um, starting a new job means that you're going to be you now dealing with new people. And you have to drive a different route to work. A longer route to work. Against traffic though. And I remember the first morning that I was driving out. And I'm sharing this with you guys because people look at me and they think you're so bold and confident. Sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. I'm driving out the first morning and I cried for the entire journey. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> when I almost get there, I'm like, you know, there's no turning back. Like you've made this decision. What was holding me back? Fear. What did I have to fear? Me never even know. Me just fear something. Something. Yeah. Yeah. And then you start thinking little things like, will I make friends in this new job? Will they like me? But you know what the biggest thing was for me? The concern about whether or not I would do well. And I was already putting myself in a place of shame, just in case me never do so well. And I was like, but you're doing well where you were. <laughs> and you're, you're going to leave and take up yourself. And guys, you see, when I got to the parking lot, looking like a hot mess, and I fixed my face, and I called my mother. And I said to her, I said, Marcy. She said, you reach? I said, I reach. She's like, proud of you, girl. Not come dead, just like that. She's like, God is with you. Walk in faith. Have a good day. That's all I needed. <laughs> me did prepare for tell her how me feel, though. I was like, not a problem. <laughs> walking in faith, walking in faith. <laughs> I do not regret a moment of that decision. <laughs> I don't. So guys, the thing that you've been struggling with, the decisions you've been struggling with, the change you've been struggling with, it will be fine. The change in career that you've been struggling, because if, if I do that, then I'm going to have to start all over again. Be prepared also to take a lower role. Be prepared to do that if that's your dream. Be prepared to move out of an office into an open plan. Be prepared for to have a parking lot that is far. <laughs> no, 
the things that hold us back. Yes, because I'm going to have to walk far in my high heels. Bring us off shoes. Be prepared to be outside of everything that makes you comfortable and everything that you know. And it will be fine. People, we have another chance. This minute is God saying to you, you have another chance. You have another chance to fulfill the purpose that you're placed on this earth for. You have another chance. Look back on your CV and ask yourself, the things that I say that I want to do, do I have anything on my CV that suggests at all that I'm interested in that? Hmm? Don't worry about what you don't have on it yet. Attitude gets you a lot further than brains will ever. Yeah. People like to work with people that they like. They don't like to work with difficult, bright people. <laughs> All right? Okay? So I want you to allow yourself, before you even start planning this year, to unravel, to unfold, to start just pulling away the things and dealing with them and facing up to them, the unforgiveness, the shame, the imposter syndrome that you're struggling with. There's a book called Presence. It's written by Amy Codley. Everybody read it? Now, one of the things in there, and let me just adjust myself as I wrap up, to say to you, your body language is everything. As you sit in this GMMB room today, I want you to straighten up on the back at on a chair. Yeah. I want you to sit like you are the champion that you know you are. If you have your hand at the side of your head, I want it removed. You see, when we hold ourselves like this, we're locking ourselves away. I want you to start picturing how you feel when you feel successful. I want you to start picturing how you feel when you start falling in love with yourself, with everything about yourself. Because the true superpower is falling in love with yourself. Now, in that book, she talks about power posing and the effect of body language. And that body language can actually trick us, us, your own self, into a feeling of power. She also talks about people looking at you and immediately making assumptions about you. All of you who are aspiring for leadership, and gentlemen, you're a little better at knowing to just walk and sit at an empty chair at the table. Ladies, sometimes we have a way we walk into a meeting room, and we see the whole big long table, and we take a seat at the side. You were invited to the meeting. You did the pan the meeting invite. Go sit down by the table. And don't squinge up in a corner, sit in the middle so that you can see everybody and everybody can see you. I'm here. Rex Nettleford used to say, I'm here. <laughs> now, there's a pose called the superhero pose. You know it. So, before I leave, I want everybody to stand up and them foot them. <laughs> and I want you to hold your feet them shoulder width apart. And you have to rock too. Because, you see, when Amy was doing it, she never knows that Jamaican people she had to deal with. <laughs> huh? Eh? Because, you know, Jamaican people, we don't just stand up. We have to stand up. <laughs> eh? Eh? Because, you know, anything we walk in, we have to, like, look round first. Look round. <laughs> Who there? On a see Eh? 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 So you're standing with your feet shoulder width apart. And I want you to stand in through your heels. I'm going to want you to look upon your future and say, I'm here. I'm here. Rock, rock with me, rock with me. Because <laughs> eh. eh. you know, sometimes when it's seated, we have to dip. Because I'm here. I want you to put your hand by your side. Look around upon people. <laughs> oh, remember me. <laughs> when you see me in a magazine. You did sit on side of me at JMB. I will remember you because I'm here. And then I just want you to stand up straight. 
I'm a why I look for your future. I'm a why I say me own you. <laughs> me, I come for you. I'm a why you say your name out loud. So me, I say, Rashi is here for you. Say your name, say your own name. Because I'm here.